Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. We are currently in the Weezer system where the unknown aliens to our south that we've nicknamed the Sin Menace are currently surveying. Now, these aliens have been openly hostile towards us, uh, taking military against us, military actions against us in Jolwar, and actively competing for us, uh, competing with us for territory in the area. Um, now this Weezer system has great strategic importance for us because if you look at it, it is our only gateway into the rest of the galaxy over here. So it is an incredibly valuable system. And I think that um, while we could back down and let them have the system, I think we're done being bullied by stronger and aggressive empires. And I think that we need to do whatever we can to secure this system for ourselves so we can secure potentially trade and diplomatic access down to this region of the galaxy. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that they're still surveying this with a uh, science ship. And we're going to see if we can go ahead and move our construction ship um, to build a star base out here. Now it's going to cost us a little bit of extra um, influence. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it to secure the Weezer system because that's going to allow us to continue expanding down here if we want or at the very least it's going to allow us to have um, a border with any empires down here and it's going to allow us access. Um, so I'm going to cancel our uh, construction ship's current um, orders and I'm going to order it to make its way down here. And I'm almost tempted to turn this uh, construction ship onto passive mode. Yeah, we're going to take it off of evasive and we're going to turn it on to passive mode. And that's going to allow us to get to Weezer more directly. Um, we just need to make sure that we're steering clear of the uh, space station. Um, we don't want to enter its combat radius. So I think I'm going to order the construction ship to go this way. Um, so we take a wide radius around the space station so we don't aggro it. Second thing is, is I apologize if you were... Um, seeing this all last episode, we can actually choose a council agenda and this has been open for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a council agenda for us. Um, so let's see what our options are. Um, display of power. So this can give us more influence from power projection, which we're probably going to have a, a lot of because we're over our naval capacity um, right now. Um, so this could be really good for us, um, but it's also going to give us war exhaustion gain minus 5%, which isn't that important for us given that we're not at war. Um, we could of course also take uh, chart the unknown. Um, we are still doing a little bit of exploring, but I have a feeling that we're almost going to be done with the exploring chapter in our lives. So I don't think we need to actually take chart the unknown right now. Um, I think our other options Superior colonies is going to help us develop co new colonies more quickly. Um, we already have a colony in the works. Strong on our own is going to give us pop growth speed, less trade value, and more xenophobe uh, attraction. I think we might take strong on our own, actually. The pop growth speed is great. Is great. Um, and, of course, once we launch the modifier, it's also going to give us plus 10 stability. So I think we're going to go for strong on our own. Um, and the second thing is, is I think our leader pool, oh, okay, we have eight days to refresh. So when our uh, leader pool refreshes in eight days, we're going to go ahead and see if we can hire on an egalitarian minded uh, official. Uh, without further ado, I think it is time for us to unpause the game and uh, see where this takes us. We are currently negative in unity, and I'm wondering what's causing that. Um, hmm. Well, nevertheless, I think I'm going to buy 500 minerals so we can afford an administrative offices on our uh, empire. That's going to help us generate some more unity. Um, I think we're also going to try and get some, uh, um, Autochthon monument, monuments on all of our worlds. That's going to help us generate unity as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and unpause. And now that our eight days has probably passed, we can go ahead and hire a new governor. Um, and I think 
Well, we have two options for egalitarian governors. Um, they're around the same age, so that's not really going to play a factor. We could either take um, a councillor effect that gives us more minerals from jobs. We don't actually have that many mining districts on our planets, so that's not going to be that useful for us. Or we could take a uh, planet governor effects, sector governor effects, crime minus 10. I think this is going to be better for us. So we're going to take this governor. Okay. And we can assign this governor. Um, I think we're going to assign this governor to this, um, this new colony over here. Let's actually see what our leader capacity is right now. Um, I'm, I'm aware of our unity, so I don't want to hire too many governors. And I actually think that uh, we can make a new sector here and use that governor for our new sector. I would eventually like to get a governor on all of our major worlds, but right now I don't think that's feasible given that we're losing unity and leaders cost unity as uh, upkeep. Our attempts to learn more about the Sin Menace have so far been in vain. While we are easily able to ascertain that they are clearly part of a technologically advanced civilization, further facts have proven elusive as they seem to be going to considerable effort to prevent us and any other eavesdroppers from intercepting their signals from them. Uh, we have therefore only managed to intercept small fragments of their language so far. However, from the glimpses we have gleaned, our linguists are confident that they will be able to decipher the communications if we just acquire a greater sample size. A proposal has been drawn up for a somewhat more aggressive information gathering. Some may call it hacking, but they will surely not take kindly to it should they detect it. Um, now we rejected this offer, um, I think, with the Mythfell order, but I think we're going to go ahead and take take this option for the Sin Menace because we are in open competition and open hostility with them right now. So hacking is not beneath us. We must find out their secrets. Um, great. Now I'm keeping an eye on my construction ship so that we can move it to the Weezer system as soon as possible. Colony established. Our colonists on Fortalia will need to deal with the ancient robots on its surface who we presume were left behind when whatever fate befell their makers spared them. Many of these antiquated automatons have responded to our presence, making repetitive queries in an alien tongue. We believe they are awaiting input. They do not appear to be sentient, and they are likely lack higher reasoning functions. Um, let's see what we can learn about these rudimentary robots. They have no traits. Um... We don't need any alien technology on our world right now, and we don't know if they're dangerous and if they might pose us any problems in the future, so I think we're just going to scrap them for minerals. Um, we will just grow our own uh, population onto this planet, and if need be, we will um, build our own robots. And uh, we can go ahead and we can assign our Tribune of Rights, Governor, to govern this world. Mining your own business. Deep within a crevice of the giant asteroid MFT-668, we have found something astonishing. There is mining gear attached to the rock, digging itself into the vast depths of the asteroid. It stands abandoned with no signs of who placed it there. If we stop the machine, we might be able to learn something about the technology used to build it, but we must hurry before random debris crushes it. Um, all right, let's see where this is. Let's see if we have a construction ship anywhere nearby that we can uh, use to stop the drill. Um, so this is in the, I apologize. Uh, this is in the SIDAR system, which is right here. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be a second priority. So we're going to try and stop the machine, um, but we're going to do that after we build a, an outpost in the Weezer system. Um, because getting this territory, getting this access way into the rest of the galaxy is going to be top priority for us. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about our unity. Let's see. Yeah, our leaders are just... They, they take a lot Research of unity complete. to upkeep, so we really need to get some unity up and going on our planets. So I think getting those monuments built is going to be... Um, very important for us. Um, so once we build a city district on Desadia, 
I think we are going to use our extra building slot to build a monument. Um, we have a new technology that's giving us worker pop resource output plus 5%, which is great. Um, and now we have option for more technologies. Um, we could get access to destroyers. Um, we could get level three rail guns, which would be pretty good. But I think now is finally time that we need to start uh, hacking away at these technologies that we have access to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us access to um, frigates and torpedoes. Um, our military is still slowly moving down to the Jorolar system, so we can be ready for any um, conflict should it arise. System survey complete. A colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. All right, let's find out what it is. Um, in the Jorowar system, since this is a um, bordering system and these aliens have been aggressive towards us, I'm going to go ahead and fortify it and we're going to make this into like a, a bastion. Um, so we're going to put some uh, gun hangers, some, uh, sorry, some, what are those called? Anyways, we're going to put um, lasers and missiles and some hangar bays on this uh, Special project on complete. this bastion to help us defend the solar system more easily. The team under science officer Bonnie Baerin has finished their expedition on Rebulon 4 and returned to the ISS de Dirim. Thankfully, the starship graveyard on the surface proved to be a technological treasure trove. That's good news. Studying the remains of these vessels has advanced their research in certain fields by several years, and there are yet things to discover. A permanent science outpost in orbit would be a great boon for our uh, starship engineering efforts. All right, that's a great um, outcome. We have a whole bunch of new engineering research, and if we continue to study that solar system, um, we can gain some engineering research over time. Um, our science ship now needs orders, um, and we are done exploring in this general direction. Um, oh, actually, no. We need to survey the Tuyubo system, and then we have a couple projects to research. Uh, namely, the Zvan Laboratory with the um, supposedly very dangerous weapon here. Um, and then we have that asteroid that the mining drones came out of, and we need to figure out who put them there and why. So we're going to move that science ship over there to solve all of those mysteries. All right. Thick layers of ash and notable mass extinction event in the geological record coincide with the material previously extracted from Gruner data crystals, suggesting that the Gruner firebombed Uragasi 3 with a gelling incendiary roughly 7 million years ago. Well, that would explain why the planet is barren right now. Um, that's horrible. They just destroyed an entire planet. Widespread deforestation of the planet's surface disrupted local ecosystems, and the lack of oxygen-fixing vegetation gradually depleted the planet's atmosphere over the next 60,000 years. Wow, that is unfortunate. All right, let's continue learning what happened to the bowl. Asteroid collision. A large middle-rich asteroid collided with Siddhar 2 at some point during the previous thousand years in what must have been a major impact event. Um, abundance of minerals can now be found on the planet in the vicinity of the impact crater. Um, I think we missed this anomaly here too. So once we're done surveying Halito, we're going to go ahead and research the anomaly here. Uh, let's read what the anomaly was. Um, there are unusual amount of hyperlanes in this system. One, two, three, four. That doesn't seem that unusual. I see another four hyperlane system right there. Um, usually we would dismiss these as too small to facilitate a spaceship, but the sheer amount is intriguing in and of itself. Okay, well, we're gonna see what, what the deal with these hyperlanes is anyways. All right, our um, Corvette fleet is on its way. System so our <laughs> flagship is a little bit slower. But that's okay. System survey complete. All right, so we are starting work on the. Uh, we're starting work on the anomaly there, and we're gonna go ahead and move our construction ship out of this system before they decide to attack us. It's definitely a risk. We're putting this construction ship in danger, but I think we need to. 
It's a matter of national security. All right, so we can upload, uh, we can upgrade our Minister of State, who's currently also the governor of our home world. Um, so let's see what our options are for um, veteran level uh, governors. We could get diplomatic weight plus 5% um, for our emissaries assigned to the galactic community. Um, and this would also um, apply to envoys sent in federations. Um, neither of those are relevant to us right now. We could take industrialist, which is going to improve the specialist pop resource output and a pop amenities to uh, take down the pop amenities usage on our planets. Um, that can be really good, especially for um, especially for our main sector, which is going to include our two largest planets. And once we get Jaltham uh, terraformed, it's also going to include the Jaltham planet as well. Um, so industrialist might be a really good shot for us. Um, this can give us trust growth plus five percent as a counselor. Um, while I'm tempted by this, I don't know how much diplomacy we're doing right now. We're kind of trying to be isolationist, so I don't think we need trust growth. Um, or, of course, we could take pop upkeep minus 5% and trade value plus 5%. Um, this is an empire effect, so pop upkeep minus 5% across the entire empire. No, I'm going to go for industrialist. All right. Okay, so our construction made it safely to the Weezer system, and once we gain control of it, um, we can go ahead and expand our borders up this way. We're obviously not going to be able to access the system through um, Ubalon, um, but we can access it the long way this way. And this is going to allow us to continue to explore and expand down south. Um, of course, we have our colony ship here waiting to colonize the Huawei system. Um, so we're going to have to continue waiting until we can get our construction ship over there. Um, I might want to, we might want to colonize this habitable world as well. Um, let's see, it's a relic world in the system, but I think I'm a little bit uneasy because there's this rubricator thing and I want to find out what it does first. So I think I'm going to excavate the rubricator site and then we'll colonize it. Um, I've been warned uh, about the rubricator, so um, I've been warned not to settle the system too soon. So we're going to see what happens with that. Um, an abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above this moon. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggest that it relied on solar power to function. Wow, mm. that's cool. All right, so it looks like they had the same idea as us, but we just beat them to the mark. So they're bringing their construction ship as well to construct a starbase. Um, but they're too late. Construction um, complete. So I think we definitely made the right move to move here because they were thinking the same exact thing. All right, and we have an incoming transition. First contact with the Andarian archivists. Yes, yes, we've heard it all before. We're the Andarian archivists, and you are the Favarian Republic. Greetings, well met. Stay out of our space or face certain doom and so forth. Now, if you'll excuse us, we are quite busy. Well pursued true equality, do not stand in our way. Yeah, okay. Anomaly um, Asteroid in orbit. A class 12 asteroid orbits this planet. The small planetoid's orbit appears to be too stable for its presence to be a natural occurrence. Alright, let's find out how this asteroid got into the orbit. Um, how interesting. So we met a fallen empire, and this is of course the materialist fallen empire, and <laughs> the species porch is glitching out a little bit. Or maybe they're just really twitchy. Maybe they had too much coffee in the morning. Um, in any case, um, yeah, they're materialist, so maybe they'll ask us for some favors from time to time um, to study us. I don't know if we're going to oblige, but nevertheless, um, that might be an option. Okay, so they're moving their construction, construction ship complete. out. They were too Research slow to get to complete. the system. All right. Research complete. We've got basic combat roles on our ships, so we can probably think about going and upgrading them. Now, we just moved all our ships down here, so maybe we want to get a new shipyard somewhere in this system, in this area. And I think a good place for that is going to be the um, Huawei system, because we're going to put our colony there. And I like to have a starbase in our colony systems so that we can collect the trade value. Um, so once we colonize this system, 
we will go ahead and build a starbase and we will build a shipyard on that starbase. Um, all right, so as far as choosing a new research goes, let's see what our options are. We can get planetary FTL inhibitors, starbase FTL inhibitors. Um, I don't find that the AI usually tries to sneak through your systems. Um, if we were playing like multiplayer, I think this would probably be more important. But the AI usually just goes to attack a system before it tries to move through it. So I don't think we need to get this straight away. Um, we'll get it eventually. Um, now the sensors will be pretty good for us. But I think, again, the most important thing for us right now is getting on top of our energy situation. So as much as I want to take this, we need to go for energy credits from technicians plus 20%. Um, okay, great. So once we're done building our systems here, I think we're going to go ahead and we're just going to build Starbase, Starbase, Starbase so that we can start colonizing. Convenient mining. The asteroid around Flump 4 has such a perfectly stable orbit that it's easy to understand why our scientists thought it was placed there artificially. Yet there are no conclusive indications of any propulsion systems or any other artificial marring. The only natural conclusion is that by some absurdly improbable chance, the asteroid got caught in Flump 4's gravity field. We have also detected some rare crystals on the surface of the asteroid. Well, that's always a bonus. Rare crystals. Um... Oh, right, we had this time project on the Sadar system, so I think I'm actually going to move our construction ship over there um, before the time runs out. Solar Sailor. We have discovered an abandoned solar ship in orbit around Toyubos 5A. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails is a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. Certainly, sailing is um, definitely an interesting way to get around the galaxy. Um, so we are in the middle of building a mining station and when that completes, we are going to research the project right away. And then I think after that, since we're over here, we're going to build a starbase in Huawei. Research complete. Um, research complete. We finished our engineering research. Um, now we could go for exploiting rare crystals, which would be pretty good. We could also get more engineering research from researchers, or we could get more mining station output. Those are the three that are really jumping out to me. This is gonna take us a really long time to research, 6,000, and I don't think we're ready for um, something that um, demanding yet. So I think we need to take some of these earlier things. And I think we're going to go for mining station output. We can get crystals later. We don't really have a use for crystals right now, so it's not really worth it. We're going to get mining station output plus 10% because a large part of our um, energy is coming from uh, stations. You can see 69 energy is coming from stations and our jobs are only producing 48. Um, so getting plus 10% uh, is going to be pretty good for us. Um, our Jorlwar system has finished building, so we can go ahead and equip it with um, a gun battery. Um, I think we're going to stick with gun batteries for now. Torpedo batteries are going to be better later in the game complete. when the AI has some bigger ships to throw at us, but against Corvettes, torpedoes are kind of um, lackluster. System um, complete. We can move our construction ship. Uh, let's see which system is going to be good for us to expand to over here. I see 13 minerals in this system and some rare um, resource deposits. So let's go ahead and let's queue up a star base over here. I know I said we were going to go for Rebulon, but we can get that later. It's not super important that we get it right now. Um, expansion. New colonies start with one additional pop, or we can get Starbase Influence cost minus 10%. Um, both of these are going to be really useful to us right now, because we are building a lot of new Starbases right now. Um, well, we're also considering colonizing Huawei. Um, but honestly, one additional pop, that's not like that useful. Like we can grow a pop in just a matter of months. So I think we're going to take Reach for the Stars um, because right now that is something we are doing a lot of. So I'm going to actually cancel the order that we just did and we're going to re, um, we're going to requeue this order. Now it's only going to cost us 52 influence. 
the political frontier. Established factions and fledgling movements uh, alike have taken an unusually keen interest in our new colony on Fortalia. That is, of course, our new Gaia world. From the moment we announced the settlement of this modest planet, nearly every political voice in the Favarian Republic has had something to say about it. Our analysts don't suspect that anything truly radical is taking root on Fortalia, but they advise some caution. It's clear our various political entities intend to campaign vigorously on this burgeoning world. All right, so they have extra ethics chip chance. That's totally fine. Um, and we are gaining 448 unity. All right, that sounds good. Again, uh, we need to keep the starbase. Um, first contact event pending. Our attempts to covertly delve into the network systems of the Sin Menace to find out more about them have been unsuccessful. Boo. Okay, that's too bad. Envoy Viri Bathon and her science team quickly realized that the systems they were up against were simply too advanced, or their overseers were too vigilant to be caught out in this manner. Fortunately, she was able to abort their hacking attempt before it was detected. We will have to do this the hard way then. Yes. Um, and lastly, we have an archaeological event. Uh, looks like we finished this site. Several exemplary bull fossils have been recovered, revealing the long lost species to have been a hive mind. Ooh, that's cool. We haven't uh, encountered any hive minds so far in our playthrough. Um, billions of plantoid units working together as a whole, like the leaves and roots of branches of a tree. Dendrochronology, I like that word, dendrochronology, suggests that individual bull specimens had lifespans in the hundreds of years. The lack of structural ruins on Urugasi 3 appears to be the result of the bull's reliance on remarkable organic technology from ships and buildings to wetware and biocomputers and the ravages of time. Fascinating. Oh, okay. We still have another chapter to explore. Um, timed project. Yeah, we know about this timed project. We are actually moving our construction ship or our science ship rather. No, it's a construction ship because they need to do it. Yeah, to that system. Grand Theft Planet. Um, where is this? Oh, this is the hyperlanes thing? Okay, the planets were moved. The abnormal hyperlanes we detected in the Halito system were each tethered to where we previously had to expect to discover worlds. After studying these strange lanes, we realized that they all led to the same place. A star system called Daka, Dacha which was thought to be unreachable, yet if we were to combine all these slender hyperlanes, we could pass a science ship through. Um, who would choose this option? Of course we want to know. We're, we're deadly curious. Let's find out where the hyperlanes lead. Um, so where's Dacha? Here's Dacha. Oh! Oh, okay. So I, I remember encountering this anomaly in several playthroughs ago. Um, this is that system. Okay. There is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Gaia worlds in this system. Um, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you um, if in case you're seeing this for the first time. Um, so let's go ahead and let's explore Dacha. Um, this is a cool one. Anomaly found. Our science officer has found an anomaly. It will require extensive probing, but could garner a substantial find. All right, that's very vague. Just a, a general anomaly. No more description than that. Um, okay. We are building our gun batteries. I think in addition to the gun batteries, we could build crew quarters. Or... We could build something more defensive, like a disruption field generator. Or a communications jammer. I think we're going to build a construction, uh, disruption field generator. That's going to cause our enemies to have fewer shield hit points in the system. All right. Worlds of Plenty. Orbiting each of the three stars in the Dacha system are ecological paradises, Gaia worlds, with each, uh, each capable of sustaining organic life. Initially, we thought these might be uninhabited, given the lack of pollution. Yet after performing deeper scans, we discovered large, sprawling cities spanning each planet from end to end. Wow, so they're inhabited. Stranger still, it seems like that the only central star has planets originally from the system. The others are orbited by planets from Helito and other more remote systems. But how? They moved the planets? Okay. We are definitely going to have to look into this. 
Diamond in the Rough. After study of Toyuba's 4A was concluded, science officer Bonnie Baerin reports that they have found the planet to be usually unusually rich in minerals. This discovery was made possible in part thanks to a certain member of the ISS the Dirham crew. Bonnie Baerin praises the protege highly. Um, we could hire a new scientist, but given our shortage of unity, I don't think we need any new leaders in the mix. Um, they do good work where they are. That's a really good modifier for our science ship. Anomaly research speed and discovery chance plus 20%. Mm -hmm. Wow. Way to go. Six minerals from one planet. It's pretty good. It's a moon at that, too. All right. So we have three available jobs, eight available housing. This planet's looking pretty good for us. Um... Before we read this event, I want to sort out one more thing on this planet, because we do only have one available job. Um, so I think we are going to... We need unity, right? So we are going to build a monument here. Yeah. Gene clinics and monument should be the first two buildings on all of our um, worlds. Have not unified world encountered. Surveying a new Gaia world is usually a momentous event, but for the crew of the ISS Yavaldim, it is going to become routine for the next few months. The multiple worlds house some very strange pre-FDLs. They obviously have not achieved spaceflight, yet their renewable energy production rivals our most efficient reactors. A uh, further oddity is the equal spread of resources. Every world has everything they need to survive, which should be impossible. We are seeing goods only produced on one planet arrive at the other with a, without a single transport ship taking flight. All right, we need an observation outpost now. Um, we need to we need to see what what's up with this pre-FTL civilization. They're seemingly moving things between planets, even though we don't see a single spaceship. Report: Political discourse on Fortalia. Our political scientists have been observing Fortalia with keen interest. However, despite feverish campaigning and a lot of recent fuss in the media, they forecast a fairly typical outcome for the colony's political future. Our researchers note that no news amounts to good news here. Despite what some fringe elements in our society may claim, there is as yet no signs that Fortalia is being molded into a hotbed of autocracy. Democracy remains a good founding principle there for now. Good. We like democracy. Um, Fortalia. One housing, two jobs. Uh, I think we need to build a city district to uh, up the housing for us a little bit. First contact aborted. Our first contact with the Sin Menace has been aborted as they have established communications with us. Ah, okay, they beat us to it. Well, I guess all this kind of Cold War nonsense that's been going on with us kind of competing for territory and being hope, uh, openly hostile, yet we don't really know much about them, is going to be over. We have established communications, and they are the Coalition of Panaxala Prima. They appear to have successfully translated our language. All right, so they are a military junta, so they're oligarchic, xenophobic, and militarist. Okay, so they kind of see eye to eye with us a little bit, um, but they're hegemonic. Um, so whereas we're more isolationist, these people actually want to assert their dominance over others. So we need to watch out for these guys. They might not be the friendliest of neighbors. Archon White Needle and the ruling council of the Coalition of Panaxala Prima have instructed me to bring you this warning. Keep your ridiculous looking alien ships well away from our space and know that a mil an our military will respond to any transgressions with maximum force. Alright, we will respond in suit. Keep out of our way or we will make you or we will fight for our right to exist. We will fight for our right to exist. Um, I don't want to push a conflict if we don't need one, but obviously... There is going to be some tension. All oh, right, so they are uncomfortably close. Special project. All right, complete. they've closed their borders to us. That's fair. We have our borders closed to them, and I wouldn't want open borders with them in any case. Special project completed. We managed to stop the excavator before it broke down. Ah, okay. We made it to the Sidar system. We are here at the um, asteroid where there was a, a mining drill. It's a remarkable piece of machinery with smooth surface covered in diamonds. At the first glance, the whole drill seems to be one solid piece, but it's simply so well put together that you cannot notice the grooves and joints. Our engineers will be able to reverse engineer some of this technology. 
Excellent. So this is going to give us tech progress for geothermal fracking plus 50%. All right. I'll take it. Um, so now our construction ship is moving to the fallway system to build a star base. Um, good news. Foreign empires claim our system. So it rightfully complete. belongs to us. The coalition of Panexala Prima has auda audaciously laid claim to the Weiser system. All right. Um... I guess we should have expected that, right? We were both frantically trying to, to gain control and influence over the system not not too long ago. So of course they're gonna be a little bit envious of it. Ancient shipyard. Our ancient and orbital, sh and orbital shipyard drifts in silence above this world. It has suffered significant battle damage and entire sections of the facility are missing. Well, let's find out what happened to this facility. Um, so the fact that they are claiming it means that they have they might be able to justify going to war with us to conquer the system, so we might want to think to defend it. Event change habitable event chain habitable world survey. Though our surveys of habitable through our surveys of habitable worlds, our biologists have collected a vast amount of data on alien life forms. Many of our older theories of the development of life have been disproved, and our science and our scientific community has had to build new models from scratch. Our most interesting findings are being displayed on the newly dedicated Museum of Exobiology on Favaria. The public is enthralled and many donations have come in to aid the continued search of strange life forms. Excellent! So we get a whole bunch of uh, society research and we get 977 energy credits. Great! We learned a lot from New Worlds. Okay, so we have a scientist who's not doing anything. We have an anomaly that the scientists could be um, studying. This is the ancient shipyard. I don't know why we're not currently doing that. I thought we sent him to do that. We have a construction ship not doing anything. Okay, let's build mining stations in Ednit. Um, and we have a colony ship, which will soon be able to colonize um, the Savannah world in Huawei. We have an archeological site discovered. And where is this archeological site? It's in Halito. And the archaeological site is ruins. Ruins cover Halito 1, but oddly, the blast patterns seem to indicate that a vast nuclear expansion occurred underneath the surface rather than from atmospheric or or orbitable bombardment. This warrants further investigation, but it will require archaeological dig to reveal what happened here. All right. We will have to check it out. System um, a, level, a leader leveled up. This is our new counselor, the Tribune of Rights, who is now governing um, Fortalia. Now we can give this person um, Righteous 2, which is gonna further increase, uh, decrease crime in the sector and on the planet, or we could give, um, give her some other traits. Let's see, Homesteader would give food from farmers, and this is going to be a uh, farming planet. Or trade value. I think we're gonna go for homesteader. Yeah, this is gonna be a farming planet, so definitely worth picking up. Um, how are we doing on Fortalia? Right, I said we were gonna build a city district, and I never actually got around to doing it. So we're gonna build a city district. We're gonna build a monument, and Special then I think we will start building complete. some districts on on this planet. Trojan asteroid. Okay, so we finally looked into that. Um, asteroid that had the mining drones in it at the surface as the scientists as the science community on favaria hypothesized the drones found in asteroid 6467981 were indeed hiding something the valiant efforts of the iss the Deering's crew have unearthed rich mineral deposits in the asteroid's core previously obscured by the drone's presence all right plus three minerals on the asteroid seems like a lot of fuss for three minerals but i mean Beggars can't be choosers. We won't complain. All right, so we finished looking into the automated shipyard. While conducting their survey of Wodriax 6, the ISS de Arum collected the remains of an automated shipyard in orbit. It is at least a thousand years old and seems to have been subjected to a heavy missile barrage, but one of its manufacturing bays are still in working condition. Science officer Gary Baeron is confident that power can be restored to the shipyard, but it would be a significant project. Um, so we could repair the shipyard... Um, Situation get the chance. Updated. Okay, that's cool. We might think about doing that at some point in the future. 
Yep, okay, I remembered that right. That's a construction ship project. We have other things we're doing with our construction ships for the time being. Construction theme. complete. Um, this science ship is done surveying here. So we can move this um, science ship over here and do some surveying in and around here. This construction ship has finished uh, building in the flyway system, so we can go ahead and construction complete. move our um, colony ship. Um, we can move our colony ship to go colonize the savannah world. Um, what we're going to call it... Let's call it Korim. Okay, so... Drawar is now fully fortified and it's got the entire fleet here. Um, in Fuawe, we also need to build a shipyard. We said we were going to. Um, we have capacity for five star bases, so I think we should also get a star base in Yamathir. We should also get a star base in Nodro. Um, and that's going to take us to one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be our five possible shipyards. I think it's also going to be worth having one in Sismak. Um, I like to fortify my border systems. Um, it'd also be good to have one in Weezer as well, um, but we're going to have to wait to increase our starbase capacity. Um, we are short on minerals, but we can go ahead and buy in some in minerals, because I think we are going to want to use these minerals to build mining stations Special project complete. and to build research station. Invisible death. Our scientists have returned from the Zvan labs unscathed with footage collected from the facility's security camera. It shows lab scientists bound and gagged as guerrilla soldiers pry open the weapon strong box, but to their dismay, the box is empty. Only minutes later, the rebels can be seen writhing on the floor in intense agony, dark, pat dark patches swelling across their bodies, and their skin rips in gray unidentifi un unidentifiable matter splits out. Was the box really empty? Or was it just invisible, what was in there? The matter continues to expand, swirling hypnotically around them until one of the scientists activates the emergency system. Sprinklers douse the room in a liquid and an electrical surge passes through it, executing all living things. Here the footage ends. Our crew can confirm that the strong box was indeed empty. Oh, that is so spooky. What if it's like a, a parasite or like something kind of invisible, like a gas or something that we can't see, and we just unleashed it on our own scientists? All right, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Um, so we have another scientist here and we could use the scientist to continue serving down here, but I think two scientists serving is enough. Um, let's move this scientist over to figure out what's going on with this rubricator. Um, so we're gonna excavate the rubricator site down here. Um, like I said, I wanna figure out what's going on with this planet before we colonize it, um, because I've been warned not to colonize the planet too early. Um, our Huawei Research complete. starport is under construction. I thought it was done already. Um, Favaria Empire Capital can be upgraded. Um, we're going to go ahead and upgrade it when Research we need complete. some more jobs. Ah, we might as well upgrade it now. All right. We finished um, engineering and society research. So for society research, I think we go for... Hmm... Let's get this tile blocker. It's a short 2,500 um, research. We'll get that done in no time. We can get engineering research from researchers for 6,000. Um, oh, we got some progress into that from one of those anomalies. Um, we could get robotic workers. We could get habitability plus 5%, which is awesome. We get plasteel armor or we get to storage. I actually like every single option we have, except for these two. Um, Wow, how do we choose? Um, let's get destroyers. Destroyers are gonna be good for us. All right, let me check the time because I think this is a um, this is yeah this is gonna be a good stopping point for us. Um, we've accomplished a lot today, so. Um, we finally established contact with the, let's see, Coalition of Panaxala Prima. Um, and they are a little bit concerning, right? They're hegemonic imperialists. 
and um, they have already claimed one of our systems. They they think they rightfully have a claim for it, and so I'm a little bit worried they might try to, to declare war and conquer that territory from us. Um, so we're gonna need to build up defensively. Um, obviously, like we were digging our own grave, we were competing with them for it, but. Um, to be fair, they were being aggressive towards us, and um, this is a zero-sum game. Anything that helps them is only going to count against us, so I think we had to do it. Um, so yeah, join me for the next time as we think about building up our defenses and making sure we fortify ourselves against uh, these hostile um, aliens. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.